Now for some on-course testing, we have come here to the beautiful Marbella Golf and Country Club overlooking the Mediterranean Ocean. And what better place to hit some dirty stingers with driving irons. But we're not gonna just focus on the penetrating low ball flights because these clubs are capable of much more than that. Now, first up, we have the TaylorMade Stealth UDI. Now I've used TaylorMade driving irons before, but they've normally just been the P790 driving iron. This offers something a little bit different. Such as an unbelievable ball flight. Oh my God. So the P790 driving eye, I'll kind of throw up a few images of it here, is a very thin type of iron. And for me, off the tee, it's an absolute beast. But off the fairways, it was not useless, but it didn't inspire much confidence. What I like about this club is it still has that whisper of a tall player design. It is still quite compact, especially when compared to the other driving irons in this test, but it offers just a little bit more forgiveness on those off center hits. And it actually flies very similar. Like the initial ball flight is similar to the P790. It's a little bit lower. like that if I did want to actually get a little bit more height on it I can move the ball forward and get it launching up a little bit easier the club is a hollow headed design you can see it's got this back weight screwed in and it's got a cheeky little speed pocket in the bottom and it's filled with something called speed foam air which is 69% lighter than its predecessor what that means I don't know but it feels great and then that's what I keep coming back to with this club behind the ball it still looks like a tour shaping it has very minimal offset so it doesn't look like you're going to hook it left but it's so much more confidence inspiring than the p790 drive nine honestly now is it too early in the morning for a dirty sting absolutely not now we have forged elements to this club head as well and that allows that little bit more of a feeling of responsiveness. It does feel absolutely superb. Now, we'll kind of have a look at the data back in the studio, but maybe the only issue with this driving iron is the distance. So often in the past, an issue with tailor-made driving irons in particular is that they've been so focused about getting the maximum amount of distance that they sometimes forget that these clubs need to be used for a little bit more of a distance gapping shot. You know, you need to be able to hit the ball into the air, yes, with speed and power, yes, but also when it lands on the green, you don't want it scooting through the back. You actually need it to retain some backspin. Now I'm just hitting a little butter cut here to this. Oh my God, they've literally just gone straight over the pin, those two, to this flag. And I'd actually say that this might be the first tailor-made driving iron that I've hit that actually feels like I have some semblance of control over it. And I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. Now, price-wise, currently, this is £209 online, and that makes it the mid-range driving iron from this test. I've got one which is more expensive and cheaper. I think that the other two within this video, they're gonna struggle to compete with this on feel because honestly, it's fantastic. Oh. Power and finesse. It's my two middle men. Next up, we have the Titleist U505. Now I say this a lot, but I'm very lucky to be able to go to different places, get fittings. And when I went to Titleist to get fit for the new irons, this for me was one of the standout clubs that I hit that day. It is very much in contention to knock the Stealth 2 Plus Hybrid out of my bag. And I, I never thought I'd say that. The fly on it is frighteningly good. Now Titleist have got a couple of different driving irons within their range. This is the bigger version of the two. The other one is the T200U. The reason I like this one a little bit more is it's a tiny bit more forgiving and it doesn't sacrifice on the power. And the ball flight is just so strong and so powerful when you need it, but you can also get it launching 
very high. Now, as this goes behind the ball, you can see that it is a bigger footprint than the tailor made. And therefore, you would think, well, it just looks super chunky, it looks really big. But what Titleist have done is this back badge, they've made it so shiny and so reflective that when you put it behind the ball, it almost like blends into the grass because it reflects it. It's a fantastic little bit of design work. The actual club head is hollow and they've got a little badge in behind the face that improves the acoustics and the feel of the club. And it, it does just feel like it, it flies off the face. That's a really perfect example. So that's gone pretty much dead straight down the fairway, but I thinned it and it just lifted off the ground and flew through the air. It, it feels like a driving iron and then that was performing basically like a hybrid. Also, this might be the most golf nerdy thing that you'll hear in this video, but the turf interaction with this club is very good. So what Titleist have done is the sole of this club. It is based on the design of the Vokey wedges. So when it makes contact with the turf, rather than digging and snagging at all, it just slides and glides through. It's a, it's a tiny thing which many people won't notice and really won't care about, but for me, it, it just zips through the impact area. Now with this backdrop, it would be rude not to try and hit a dirty stinger. Just try and keep it below the level of the mountains. Ah. So maybe, maybe we've encountered just a tiny issue with this club. So with this design, because it's a larger club head, they can get a little bit more perimeter weighting, make it a bit more forgiving, and also higher launching. So if you want to drive an iron which you can properly hit, that Tiger Woods Stinger about 10 foot off the ground. This might not be the one for you, but I mean, let's be honest about it. The amount of times you're gonna play that shot is gonna be limited. I'll give it one more go. So ball position, I'm gonna move it right into the center of the stance. I'm gonna move that weight onto the front foot about 60%. I'm gonna keep my hands low around the body and try and drive it forward. Oh, he's only gone and done it. Take it all back. Maybe this is the perfect driving iron. To achieve that shot, it felt like a lot of work. And yes, we can force it. Yes, we can make it go low. To be honest with you, for me, this club is best. When you just get set up normally and you just swing, it's still so powerful. I mean, we'll try and get a, uh, a comparison <laughs> in those shot traces there. Wow. It just absolutely flies. Now this is 249 pounds at this moment in time. So a little bit more expensive than the tailor-made and maybe the tailor-made feels slightly better, potentially looks a little bit better as well. But for overall performance, this is just unreal. That's three fairways out of three on the tightest hole in Spain. Introducing a new element into these videos, a little bit of candid cam after, uh, <laughs> after, the, after the proper mics are turned off. Those are uh, the three shots off that tee with the tightless driving iron, literally all in a row, straight down the middle of this fairway. So for the last driving iron in this test, and maybe my favorite, let me just talk you through, first of all, what I don't like about it, how they promote it on their website. Take your old crusty hybrid out of the bag, feed it a nice meal, walk it out back and shoot it. Something better, shinier and more reliable is here. Meet the Tacomo 101U. Now I'm all up for big bold claims, but that seems a little bit aggressive. However, this club, it does look absolutely fantastic. It's very, very similar to a Shrixen driving iron or a Mizuno driving iron. Size-wise, it fits very nicely in between the two clubs that we've already seen in the TaylorMade and the Titleist. Top line is quite thin. The back edge, again, is very shiny, helps it to blend in to the ground. But I think this is a good mixture of the two clubs that we've already seen. It's also a lot cheaper. So this is available on the Tacoma website for $119. And one of the reasons that I've included it within this particular video is just to show what is available out there 
for that lower price point because it doesn't have to mean a lower amount of performance. As far as tech on this club, it is very, very simple. The blade length is a little bit longer. It actually inspires a touch more confidence. It's a hollow headed construction when the perimeter weighting has been pushed a little bit further to the outside again for that bit more forgiveness. There's a tiny bit more offset. So if you do struggle to kind of hit the ball off to the right hand side, this might help a little bit more than say the tailor made, but it's a very simple design. The face is thin and that allows just really good ball speeds, but the initial flight on this is really good. Like when I hit a driving iron, I don't mind like a high launch at times as long as it's powerful. The Tacoma just takes off kind of in the middle of everything. It's a very nice window for the ball to take off in. And yes, I know that is a very snooty tour pro -y thing to say, but it does look really nice. Obviously the big question here is, does it sting? And we are about to find out. I'm not gonna say that this is better feeling than the tailor made because I, I don't think it is. It's not as forgiving as the Tice list. It simply isn't, but it's not worse enough not to seriously consider it because of the price. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Tricky hole to sting it on this as well because water right. Oh, that's such a bailout. Come on, be brave over that path. Not bad, a little bit more pickup than I would have wanted, but great shot, great strike, feel on it. Now with it being quite similar to the Strixen and the Mizuno, the question you may be asking is, well, why didn't you include the Strixen and the Mizuno? We've already done videos on those and pretty much every brand does a decent driving iron. These are just the ones that I kind of like the most at the moment. They have something different to say and that have been an advancement on what they have previously brought out as club manufacturers. Can I be brave? A little bit back in the stance. Way to touch forward, moving across the body. Stingy cut. Nope, I wasn't, uh, wasn't brave at all, but we not lost the ball. So we are back here in the studio and I have just spent the morning bashing away a quite ridiculous amount of driving irons, but the data that I've accumulated, boy, oh boy, oh boy, does it show some interesting results. So I will throw up the three clubs here and just explain some of the differences between them. Tacomo is obviously the cheapest, but within this data, it did actually show. So a carry of 222 yards versus 235 yards for the Titleist and 231 for the Taylor made. Now, I do have to point out a couple of things. So I think I hit about 100 balls today and then I narrowed it down to get the averages on good strikes, on bad strikes and all the rest of it. It was noticeable that the Tacomo on off center hits simply wasn't quite as good as the Titleist and the Taylor made. And that really was a huge differentiating factor. It was very consistent with how far it was flying and it was a good club, but these other two, the TaylorMade and the Titleist, pretty much in just every department, feel, distance, forgiveness, are just a little bit better. But you would expect that with the price difference. All the swing speeds here were just over 100 miles an hour. The spin rates between the Titleist and the TaylorMade fairly consistent. I mean, we're still looking at about just over 100 more with the Titleist, but the launch angles, that's where I really saw the big difference between these two clubs. The Titleist just took off. It took off like a Starlink satellite ready to join its friends. It just flew straight off the face up and it got a little bit more carry. So 235 yards through the air. Ball speed was only slightly higher than the TaylorMade. For me, the TaylorMade, if I was to put one of these clubs in the bag, that would be the one. The actual feel and the flight off that thing is just so, so powerful. And I feel it's maybe just a little bit more adaptable. Like I'd, I could hit it high, I could hit it off the fairway, I could hit different shots with it. For me, the Titleist, if I wanted to keep that a little bit lower, as you saw in Spain, really had to try hard. With the TaylorMade, just feels a little bit easy to adapt. TaylorMade, Titleist, are 
from really either those would be really good in the bag if you do want to learn more about the clubs that have come out this year how about you check out these videos here from the Peter Fritch Golf Channel if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe join the community on the big push to 600,000 subscribers